The brainstem consists of the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain. The midbrain is the shortest part of the brainstem. Anteriorly, this is the region of the basis pedunculi or the crust cerebri, and in between them, the fossa in here is called the interpeduncular fossa between the two crura or peduncles, basis pedunculi. And from this fossa arises the oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve. And you can see here that the cerebral peduncle constitutes most of the lateral part of the midbrain. The cerebral peduncle consists of the crust cerebri with the dark substance, the substantia nigra, and part of the tegmentum of the midbrain. Posteriorly is the region of the tectum and is characterized by the four colliculi, very characteristic. Two pairs superiorly, superior colliculi, and two pairs inferiorly, inferior colliculi. And as you can see here, that below the inferior colliculus, the trochlear nerve, very thin and tiny nerve, supplies a single muscle in the extraocular muscles of the eyeball. The trochlear nerve supplying superior oblique muscle arises from the midbrain below the inferior colliculus, but posteriorly. This is the only cranial nerve that is attached to the posterior part of the brain. Here you can see the midbrain. Uh, this is the region of the tectum, which is located behind the cerebral aqueduct. The cerebral aqueduct is the cavity of the midbrain. It connects between the fourth ventricle inferiorly and the third ventricle superiorly. And here's the region of the tegmentum. This is the tectum with the colliculi. Here again, you can see the tectum, superior inferior colliculus, the cavity, the cerebral aqueduct, and this is the region of the tegmentum. Here's the region of the third ventricle, which communicates with the lateral ventricle through the interventricular foramen. Again, here you can see this is the region of the cerebral peduncles. And in the interpeduncular fossa, we can see a tuft of small vessels arising from the circle of Willis in here. And these are called central arteries. They pass through the interpeduncular fossa, and the area through which they pass is called the posterior perforated substance. You can see here the basilar artery is formed by the union of the two vertebral arteries. They unite at the junction of the medulla and pons, and it continues upwards until it reaches the level of the midbrain where it divides into two terminal branches. We can see here the posterior cerebral arteries, and before that, it gives the superior cerebellar arteries. Between the posterior cerebral and the superior cerebellar arteries, uh, we can see here the fibers of the oculomotor nerve are located. This is the region of the pulvinar, the posterior part of the thalamus, and below it, we can see the lateral and medial geniculate bodies. Fibers that connect the inferior colliculus with the medial geniculate body form a ridge known as the inferior brachium. These have auditory function. The superior colliculus is involved in the control of visual reflexes and it receives the superior brachium. In between here and between the two thalami, in fact, this is the pineal gland. It's not related to the midbrain, but can be shown in here. Again, you can see the trochlear nerve, and this is the region of the superior medullary velum. This section is a horizontal section in the midbrain. It shows the crust cerebri. You can see the white matter in here. This is the dark substantia nigra. And in the tegmentum, you can see here the red nucleus large and oval in shape, called red nucleus because of its high blood supply, and the hole is called the cerebral peduncle. This is the region of the interpeduncular fossa, which is perforated by the central arteries, as has been mentioned previously.